Um, John, I guess to you know, start off with, um, just can you speak to you know that final possession, you know, defensively, and um, you know, just kind of what it kind of took to to pull this game out, especially after, and, and, and also was was it a challenge, especially after coming off a game like Arizona? Yeah, obviously, um, you have a, a lot of hype around the, our team now. Obviously, being Arizona, but we knew this game was going to be tough because of who they played and. Um, how close their games was, and then the final possession. I think Kamari did a great job just nutting up and getting the stop. That's what he does. My bad. Uh, but then, yeah, and then I just yeah, secured the rebound, um, and that was, that, that was it. My bad. Yeah, right in the back. Uh, please. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> that might go on Twitter. <laughs> Max, there's a point in the first half where uh, you guys were just coming out of a media timeout, and I think they got a three in the corner, and, and Coach Guard quickly called a timeout. I'm assuming he wanted to kind of address the, the defense. Um, from there, it seemed like you know you guys kind of picked it up on that end. Can you kind of talk about maybe what was said or what changed from that point to hold them you know, to, I think, 11 of 30-something in the second half? Um, he really he didn't say anything in the huddle. Um, he kind of like came back in, uh, got another play call, and went back out there. I think he understands like um, there's a lot of old guys on this not old guys but older guys, more experienced guys on this team that you know he doesn't have to kind of um, get after guys in the huddle in the heat of the moment. Like we kind of knew what we had to fix. Um, I think we're all kind of pretty hard on each other in the in the halftime locker room just when it's the players in there waiting for the coaches in a good way though not kind of like getting after each other but just you know talking about what we have to improve on but there wasn't anything really specific that was said in that huddle um you know I think we kind of all knew uh <laughs> the issue that had just kind of happened and how we had to fix it so Michael John uh, I think it was like 10 minutes into the second half you had all but one of the team's field goals, I guess. Like, do you kind of realize that that's sort of where the game's going and that you need to keep searching for your shot? Uh, just playing the flow of the game. Um, if, if the defense, I just take what the defense give me. If a scoring threat is there, I'll take it. Um, if I got to get it on and get to the next guy, I'll do it. So, yeah. Nick, please. Um, for Max and, and John Tanjay, uh, what does Carter, you know, really bring, like especially on the defensive end, and how did kind of that small ball lineup kind of help shift things a little bit late? Yeah, he brings experience and just he's just tough. I think he, you know, he understands and he knows what Wisconsin basketball is all about, and he's willing to, you know, put his put himself on the line uh, and do anything it takes to win. And I think he's huge, huge part of this team, uh, huge part of the culture. So I mean, he he's amazing. He's huge for us. Yeah, um, kind of just build off it. I know John said Janicki was his roommate last week. That's my roommate, so I get to brag about him now. But um, it's just a guy who, you know, works his tail off every day. Um, I mean, you look, you kind of look at the stat sheet, you don't really – nothing's glaring, but, like, five rebounds, comes in, guards his yard, um, plays with an incredible amount of energy and, you know, toughness on defense. And I think that's just kind of his identity. And it's a guy that's just really bought into his role and is bought into winning – um, he wants to do anything possible to impact the game and impact, you know, this team moving forward. So I think it's just a credit to his work ethic, you know, keeping his head down, uh, staying the course no matter <clears throat> if it's 20 minutes like tonight or, you know, maybe f 5 to 10 in another night. Um, you know what you're getting out of him every time he steps on the floor. Go ahead, partner in the back. John Sanjay, this, for you, uh, qu this question is for you. After a 41-point performance against Arizona, come back tonight. Finished with 19 points. You got it going in the second half. You and John Blackwell. Would you speak about your mindset being able, being able to know when to get it going? Yeah, just trying to take what the defense gives me, and also just trying to play the game. I think at the end of you know at the end of the second half, there were some times I needed to get downhill and try to make a play for my team, and um, you know we we strung together a couple stops, um, and it made some some crucial free throws uh, with Blackwell as well. So. Um, yeah, just doing everything we can to win. Um, Mark and then – or Michael? Go ahead, Michael. I'm sorry. Yeah, for any of the three of you, is the way that teams have been able to get inside on you guys really the biggest defensive flaw at this stage? Mm, I think our ability to kind of keep the ball in front of us sometimes has gotten to us a little bit. Um, 
I think that's kind of somewhere we know we have to be better in. But um, like this is a this is a tough game for a guy like Nolan Winter, Stephen Crowell, where they're you know undersized five, both of them that can shoot the three at a really high level, and they're running actions, you know, flare actions that are curling into the front of the rim. Um, Pin on dribble handoff actions where you know they kind of got to be there to shock, but have to be there to take away the three when their man pops too. So, uh, personally, I know Steve likes playing a guy who's like seven foot two sixty compared to a guy who's kind of undersized um, to him, just because it's, it's a lot more moving, chasing, uh, you know, schematic things that they kind of have to deal with. But those guys on the bench, you know, poured into every other dude that was playing the game tonight. And I think, you know, that's kind of why you saw Coach Guard go a little small ball with Gilly at the five and John John Tom at the four. But um, I think having those guys in, you know, for these other games uh, definitely helps our, uh, you know, closing up stuff in the paint. Final question, Mark, go ahead. Oh, oh. Ben, we got Ben too. So. John, I just want to get your thoughts. I think uh, I counted eight of the final ten possessions you guys got a point, at least a point out of those possessions. Can, can you speak about that point in the game and what was kind of the, the, the approach and the strategy to, you know, close out the game? Um, <laughs> uh, just trusting uh, the guys we have. Um, we practice on finishing games out and making free throws and executing down the stretch. So I credit to these guys, um, me, Cam, John, T- J- J- JT, um, just playing under control and, Finishing the game up. Ben. For Max and John Tanji, Max first, you've played in a lot of MTEs over your time here. What has you – what were the benefits of playing these? A lot of what? Uh, said- multi-team events. You're going to West Virginia here. Oh, Come yeah. up here. Sorry. Um, you've played a lot of these events against some good competition. What do these events do for um, a team um, over the course of the season? For John Tanji, this is going to be your first event with Wisconsin. What has you excited about the challenge that's coming up here? Um, I think it's a pretty good team bonding experience. You know what I mean? Uh, last year when we went to Fort Myers, yeah, Fort Myers. Um, I mean, we got to go to Florida, so that was a lot of fun to kind of see the sun. I don't. I think it's gonna be like raining in Greenmire, but um, you know, you you get to know a lot about each other early on. Um, kind of in that, I look at it as like a tournament mindset. You know what I mean? Kind of going to a neutral site um, where fans will be traveling from the, you know wherever their college or university is coming from. So I think it's a good kind of early test um, to see how it's going to be at a neutral floor. Um, You know, there's no really home court advantage or something like that. Kind of, you know, everybody has to bring their own energy, um, whether that's on the bench, the five guys on the floor. Um, And just, I mean, you kind of learn more about one another and um, who really loves kind of just to play basketball at that point and um, can kind of go out there and not need a, crowd to rile them up or a momentum swing play to kind of happen to get them going so but they're always fun like these trips are always a blast um these are what you remember well hope i mean after college i'm still in college so hopefully i'll remember these forever but um i'm excited to get down there or over there i don't know we're in west virginia oh greenbrier that's a city right okay well yeah it'll be fun <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think no, I'm just like, uh, yeah. I mean, I'm I'm excited to go on there. I think it's like you said, team bonding, uh, and also hopefully we can try on the red jerseys as well, um, and then kind of get in the flow of uh, you know in a in a way game and just see um, how we can bring our own energy and not you know not being in the cold center and just um, you know just build a a routine coming out of a, a hotel and just make sure we can travel um, you know with all our you know with all our um, with our brand of basketball. Um, thanks, Dave. Uh, first of all, I, it's it's what you fear when you watch them on tape that uh, they get some confidence and and how difficult they can be to guard if they get the threes going specifically from the five position. That it's going to create some matchup problems and force us um, to play smaller and it really kind of takes our advantage out of play uh, for the most part. But um, you know, credit to them. They they watched them against other everybody else and they've done a lot of the same things expect especially to nebraska and creighton the two other high majors they've played and we gave them some confidence early and that's not all on their the fours and fives defensively i didn't think our perimeter was as as physical and and uh as tight as we needed to be and we made some mistakes that allowed that forced rotations um 
and, and scrambles, and then they'd start banging some threes in and get some confidence, and it kind of grows. But um, I thought second half we were better. Obviously, the smaller lineup, I think, helped with that, trying to minimize some of that. Um, and uh, we were able to find a way when we were not at our best and, and in a unique um, team to have to try to run around with and guard. Um, and then, obviously, the plays there at the end, Kamari McGee did an awesome job of switching on the little uh, pistol action screen and standing that offensive player up and then Blackwell going to get the rebound and uh, finishing it out. So um, good teams, as I told them downstairs, good teams find a way when things aren't always clicking and things become unorthodox as, as it was tonight. Um, so we'll learn from it and keep getting better and um, move on to the next one. Mark up front. Got a question? Here comes the mic. Um, just wanted to kind of get your thoughts on uh, you know, for a stretch there in the second half, Blackwell was. I mean, you needed some offense, and he was right. the one guy delivering for you. What, what did you What did you see in terms of how he was getting that, and what what kind of stood out to you about yeah. him in the second half? Yeah, he got downhill. I thought he was in the paint, playing off two feet, got to the free throw line. Um, you know, took advantage of of opportunities. I think us playing a little smaller helped that. It, it started. We started slipping more screens with our fours and fives and created driving gaps and, and double gaps. And he was able to take advantage of those. Um, and then it did a good job when he got in there, played off two and finished, and and then get fouled. Um, you know, a few times as well. So I thought he was much much more. Um, thought first half he was a step behind things defensively. Second half, I thought he was better in that regard for the most part. And then offensively, um, you know, obviously he put us on our back, on his back there for a while in the second half. Michael? Doing things like getting that defensive rebound at the end of the game is kind of how he earned minutes last yep. year. I, like, when he molds that with the type of scoring that he was able to bring, I guess, like, what's his, what's his potential ceiling as a player just when you, that finally comes together? Well, I mean, that's the, it, you expect that all the time. You know, I think in terms of the rebounding, and that's how he got on the floor as a freshman was defending and rebounding and being, uh, you know, making good decisions with the ball. And then the scoring came as as he got more experience. So, you know, I think for him, he doesn't get rattled. You know, I got after him a little bit at halftime about defensively. He you know, thought he had some miscues and and uh, he thought he was better in the second half, and he responded. So, um, you know, not only responded defensively, and obviously that last rebound at the end was. Uh, a grown man's rebound the way he went and got it amongst traffic and we needed it. So um, those are the things that, you know, he's he has a DNA of making winning plays. And, and that obviously made several of them in the second half, but that one at the end to go get the rebound along with Kamari's, you know, ability to force him to take a really tough fade away, um, you know, were plays when the game was on the line. I'm playing it back there, Coach. <clears throat> Yeah, Coach uh, Blackwell, thirty points tonight. Uh, obviously, Friday, John Tonja, forty-one. I think Klesmet a couple weeks ago had twenty-six. Mm -hmm. What does it say about the team? You know, how nice is it able to have multiple guys that can carry a load? Yeah, I mean that's that's I think the beauty of this team. I think it's the strength of this team. I, I felt all along that we have a lot of guys that could score, and um, you know, the, to be able to find whether it's a matchup or whether it's somebody that has a hot hand or what the defense um, presents. Um, I think it was a hard game for Winter and Crowell to play in just because of the, the size and the mobility and the shooting. Um, and that takes their ability, obviously, off the table but to, to score for us. But um, it's nice when you have a lot of options, you know, and I've got a lot of guys that can go to. And good teams find ways and have different guys, you know, pick them up uh, each, each night. It doesn't necessarily – we don't have to depend on one or two guys. We have a lot of guys that are – are unselfish and and um, are pretty skilled. Right now, center court. Uh, yeah, coach. You mentioned how um, you adjusted to their size uh, with Winter and Crowell. Was that something that you knew you might have to do coming into the game? Did you see that uh, from their footage? Yes. Yeah. I mean, that's something we've done that in the past, and it's not anything new. It's just you uh, get a feel for the game and and what's given us trouble, and and that. We were better when we went smaller with Tanjay at the four, uh, Amos some at the four, Gilmore at the five. Um, we were going to go with Amos at the five, but then Gilmore was Gilmore. Uh, Gilmore's experience in those situations, I think, puts him in a position where he's a valuable asset in these type of games where we have to. It's such a blender, so to speak, offensively of what we have to guard and his experience and and mobility and. 
Um, you know, he's, he's like sized, you know, they're, they're playing small, so we have to go match it. You don't want to have to do that, but when you're playing from behind and trading baskets, um, uh, I felt if we could get, get out and get ahead of them, uh, our size would become more of an advantage, but, um, you know, obviously they got out to a great start. So it, it, uh, you know, put us in a position where we had to match what they were doing. Nick. Uh, Greg, you touched on it a little bit there, but just how does kind of some of Carter's, um, you know, maybe positional versatility, especially at the point of attack help? And how is he also representative of, of what you talked about last week, just playing for the front of that jersey, not worrying about numbers? Yeah, I mean, he's he's bounced on and off scholarship his whole career here, came in as a walk-on, um, and just loves loves the program. And obviously his his DNA goes really, really deep in, in our coaching tree with, with his dad playing for Bo and Platteville, but um, – you know, so he's he's grown up around it. He understands it, and he's a consummate team player. And the versatility, the positional versatility, the ability to switch and and, and keep the ball in front of us. Um, and I think the biggest thing with him, Nick, is the experience. You know, he's been there. He has a leg up on what Zay just hasn't had that experience and and how we defend. Um, and it's harder for Stephen Nolan because they're bigger, and you know their advantages being seven feet, their disadvantages. The ability to move and and have to recover to shooters and those th type of things. So um, that's a you like to have those tweener type guys for these games that when you have to match uh, that type of offensive flow, it it's, it helps you somewhat get it under control a little bit better. Coach, you asked us a lot of question about Xavier Amos. What are you liking about him now with this impact? Seems like he's getting more comfortable with the system and finding yep. other ways to impact the game. Yeah, I think he's he's probably more comfortable offensively right now than he is defensively. Um, and, and in these type of games are just the experience that he doesn't have shows a little bit more um, where it's more instinctive for Gilmore to, to switch a screen. If you're a little, if you're a little hesitant and you're unsure, then you end up with a shoulder turned on you and, and somebody's driving downhill when you should have stayed and stopped the ball or you left too early. So I think for him, for Xavier, it's just a matter of the continue to get the experience and play aggressive, play physical. Um, and when you can do that, then uh, you can live with mistakes if you're playing aggressive. And but I, I, what I see with him defensively a little bit is he's a little hesitant. He's not quite sure, um, and that's that's something that. As time goes on, he'll get better because he'll get more experience with it. Yeah, we've got two more questions for Coach Root here and there. Okay. There's so much potential advantage with the two big lineup. Mm -hmm. Are there ways to defend better against teams that can go small with those two guys on the floor so that it becomes a mismatch in a positive way, I guess, for you guys? Yeah, I think I think it started with, uh, as I mentioned before, the, the perimeter, I didn't feel, did a great job of helping their, their big buddies out, the fours and fives. We got, we got back cut. We got rejected on a ball screen that set up a, a backside crackback on um, Klezman's guy. Um, there were multiple, and I didn't think we were aggressive enough at the point of the attack on the five. We were back and, and not putting enough ball pressure on at times on the perimeter. I didn't think we uh, were aggressive enough on in terms of hedging screens, uh, even off ball when they're using the five in the middle of the floor. Um, you know, and I think part of it's they bang a couple threes, and it makes our bigs a little tentative. Like they're they're worried about what's going to happen next, so they're reacting rather than playing instinctive. So it's hard. I mean, that's the that's the great equalizer in college basketball is the three point line. That's why you see what you see when we get to March. Nobody makes a big deal about it now or talks about it much nationally. But you, why does an Oakland beat a Kentucky? Right? It's the matchup problem. Running around trying to chase shooters and talking to. Um, you know, their coach after the game, I'm like, yeah, you guys are hard to guard. He goes, yeah, we got all these little guys running around. And they know that's their advantage. They're trying to get – and when you let them get a, some confidence going and, and um, you know, see a few shots go in, then that, that cart starts rolling downhill a little bit. So the biggest way is to, you know, not have those breakdowns where our fives and fours are scrambling – uh, and having to cover up dribble penetration, and now we're late getting out to a to a five, or we're coming out with our hands down. So, um, being more physical at the start, I think, and more um, impose our will better from that standpoint. Like I said, it's the the bigs have to you know continue to learn and and get better in that regard. But our perimeter can do a better job, and that'll help our bigs out. But there's going to be times. This isn't 
we've done this a lot where you have to go small. It's not a, it's not an indictment on Nolan and Steve. It's just that's credit to them for trying to flip it on us and and uh, create an advantage and spread us out and and see if we were gonna go big or go go small or not. If you stay big, you're gonna be in trouble. And we had to find a way to negate some of that what they were creating. I have a question, coach. Yeah. Um, you talked a lot about um, the loss of Chucky Hepburn and like and how you had to uh, assess your guards after that. And you didn't exactly replace him in the starting lineup of the point guard, even though Kamari plays starter level minutes. Mm-hmm. I'm just curious of, of what you're liking or not liking from the playmaking from the starting guards as well as as well as all the guards on your team. I mean, it's a it's a game by game basis. Um, you know, I didn't like the decision we made at the end of the half when they went zone. We should have we we hesitated and we had something called. So that's. I'll talk to John about that. Continuing to go with what we had, even though they went zone, we were okay. We had it was good for zone or man. Um, that's a little bit of a an experience thing there with a with a, a guard that a point guard that hasn't maybe been is is in many of those situations. So, um, but I think for the most part, you know, I thought they made decent decisions tonight. Um, and we had a little flurry there in the in the second half where we tossed it around a little bit, but. Uh, for the most part, I thought we pushed the ball in transition. That's an advantage for us. We're pretty good in transition. They know it. They like it. And and we we're able to do some good things in transition. So um, regardless of whether they're a point guard or a five-man, I expect good decisions, right? So that accountability and responsibility when you have the ball in your hands doesn't diminish. You don't get more turnovers just because you're a five-man than point guards do. So just be responsible with the ball and you got to play too, right? You can't overthink it and, and become handcuffed mentally. I still want them aggressive and um, playing off two feet and, and making good decisions. And I think for the most part, we did a decent job of that.